Declaration of Holy Baptism begins on page 299 in the Book of Common Prayer. Page 299 in the Red Book of Common Prayer. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope in God's call to us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, Open the eyes of our faith, that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading from Holy Scripture. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now as he was going along and approaching Damascus, Suddenly, a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, Who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The word of the Lord. Please rise and say with me together Psalm 30, found in your bulletin insert. I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have lifted me up and have not let my enemies triumph over me. O Lord my God, I cried out to you, and you restored me to hell. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. You restored my life as I was going down to the grave. Sing to the Lord, you servants of his. Give thanks for the remembrance of his holiness. For his wrath endures but the twinkling of an eye. His favor for our lifetime. Weeping may spend the night, but joy comes in the morning. While I felt secure, I said, I shall never be disturbed. You, Lord, with your favor, made me as strong as the mountains. Then you hid your face, and I was filled with fear. I cried to you, O Lord. I pleaded with the Lord, saying, What profit is there in my blood if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you or declare your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my wailing into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. Therefore, my heart sings to you without ceasing. O Lord my God, I will give you thanks forever. Now, as we remain standing, you will find the text to the song, Those So Worthy, printed right there in your bulletin. And we'll let the band lead us forward. Thank you.
and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas, called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples. Simon Peter said to him, I'm going fishing. And they said to him, we will go with you. And they went out, got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to them, children, have you no fish? And they answered him, no. And he said to them, cast the net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. And when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and he jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging their net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. And when they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, a hundred and fifty-three of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. And Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. Now, this was the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. And when they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? And he said to them, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, then feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And he said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, then tend my sheep. And he said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter felt hurt because he had said this to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, then feed my sheep. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Dear Lord, help us to know your presence among us. We affirm this through the sacrament of baptism, your spirit, your life given to us. Help us to tend your sheep and feed your lambs in our lives through the power of your spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Does uh, anybody here like to go like to fish? Anybody here like to go fishing? Anybody? Yeah, yeah, I know a couple of you characters for sure. Anybody here who's ever been fishing in their lifetime? A whole lot of us. Okay, all right. How many of you plan to go fishing either this spring or this summer? Anybody planning on it? I sure am. I love it. I love it. All right, now several of Jesus' disciples were fishermen by trade. They were professional fishermen. They knew their stuff. Peter and Andrew, James and John. And we're told today that the rest of the disciples, um, they joined with them from time to time in the boats offshore in, in the region called the Galilee in the Holy Land. And today's gospel, it only comes up once every three years, and I love it when it does, because it's a really good fish story. It has some wonderful humor. It was meant to be enjoyed from that perspective. So I'd like to ask just to focus on that for a couple of minutes. 
It's the season of Easter here. It's the season to bring more closer to us the sense of God present in our lives. Now, first of all, a prayer for all of you planning to go fishing. This is a serious prayer. It's called, I keep it in front of me every year this time, just to keep my perspective and keep me straight. It's a prayer, fishing prayer for serenity. And it goes like this. God, grant me the serenity to accept the size of the fish I catch. The courage not to lie about it. And the wisdom to know that if I did, nobody would believe me anyway. Amen. Okay, so sometimes people who fish stretch the truth a little bit, all right? You know, I fought, I fought with that eight foot long bull shark for 52 minutes while he dragged the boat that I was in for three miles across the Gulf of Mexico. Four men in a boat and he dragged us for almost an hour before he got tired enough for me to rustle him in and then pat him on his ugly head with those razor sharp rows of teeth and then let him off the line so he can live to fight again. Any of you buying that one? <laughs> well, actually, that's my story and it's absolutely true. I always lie about my little fish. You know, they, they get a lot bigger. But if you like to fish, you know, you know that you need a certain sense of humor and irony that goes along with that sport. Today's biblical account of how the disciples came to recognize the risen Lord after Easter uh, is one of those stories. It's poignant, it's important. So remember the scene. It was a couple of days, just a few days after the horrific, sad crucifixion of Jesus Christ. His church and his state and even his own followers had utterly let themselves and God down. So the disciples ran off, they were in hiding. They were beaten down by the events that had gone on in Jerusalem. They didn't know what else to do but to get out of town. They ran from the city to the Galilee region to lay low, to hang together, until they could finally figure out what in the world they were going to do next in their lives. Now, St. Peter was a fisherman, and uh, you know he was out by trade. So he, he just figured he'd do what he always would do. He'd get in his boat. He'd go off the shore and just left the rest of the world behind, leave it behind. You know, his sadness, his stress, the strain that he felt after those days in Jerusalem and after the apparent defeat of the way of love and kindness and integrity and human generosity. Uh, when that was wiped out with the death of Jesus, he needed to get away. So he's off with his boat, but the other disciples say, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, we're going to come with you because they didn't know what else to do either. Uh, like us, at times in our lives, they felt lost, they needed help, they needed guidance that they didn't know where to get, and like us, at times in our lives, uh, sometimes we don't think it's anywhere to be found. And with the apparent defeat of their Lord being taken away by the powers of this world, they were indeed lost and they needed to go. Now, many of us know that fishing can actually be something very soothing and calming and centering. It's not about whether you catch anything or not. It's about just doing it, to get out there, get out by the water, get out with nature, get out where it's quiet and calm, and you can finally focus a place where God can find some room to get through to us, uh, you know, to catch our breath, so as, as it were, to regroup. Fishing can do that for you too. And so we're told that about 100 yards from shore, uh, they rowed out in Peter's boat, and they were still shaken to the core. They were unable to sleep. So they fished all night, the gospel says, all night long. And the professional fishermen didn't catch one thing. These guys, imagine that, professional fishermen, not able to catch one fish all night long. They really had had a really rough rough week and several days and another long night in their lives. Now, at daybreak, those of you who uh, like to fish and get up early, you know there's often a soft mist or a little fog across the lake, you know, or on the ocean side uh, that usually takes the sun an hour or two to burn off, right? 
So at daybreak, the gospel said today, the disciples are out in the boat, and, and out of the mist, they hear a voice called from the shore. And the, and, and they, the voice called them children. Did you hear that? Hey, boys, what's the matter? No fish? You've been out there all night, you guys? No fish? Who is that? <laughs> the disciples wonder. You know, the morning fire can obscure their view to the shore. Hey, kids, why don't you try throwing your nets on the other side of the boat where the fish are? Yeah, right, yeah, right. The joker chuckles from the shore. Well, you know, St. Peter's thinking to himself, you know, what a wise guy. It's if the fish are on one side of the boat on this lake, but not on the other side. Uh, but, hey, who is that guy anyway? Well, it had been a long, empty night. So Peter thinks, why not? What the heck, you know? Here goes, wise guy. So he tells the disciples, yeah, okay, let's throw those empty nets on the other side of the boat and then give that guy the box cheer, right? Except, except this exhausted act of futility with no expectation that anything good can come from it, what happens next? The nets are immediately full, teeming with fish, flopping all over the place. They were drawn, fish were drawn to that boat like kids to a to an ice cream truck on a hot summer day. There were so many fish that the disciples could not bring them all in, we're told. Suddenly, St. John realizes what's going on here. The Lord was the joker on the shore. The risen Christ had filled that net. The Lord had broken through the long night, had broken through their sadness, and everything that had happened in Jerusalem is suddenly, suddenly a thing of the past. And there's something new going on again. And once again, the Lord more than fulfills that yearning for a glimmer of hope, a glimmer of hope and grace to touch their lives. The Bible tells us they made haste to the shore with 153 fish. I'll bet there weren't even 53. But that's how fish stories go, right? That's how they go. Now, if anybody is still wondering, you know, what that voice was all about that morning, who was that? What was, what was going on? Who was that person? What, what happens next? They come to shore, and this person has cooked up a meal to share, a meal with bread. Bread. And we are told he took the bread, gave thanks, and he gave, gave the bread. Taking and blessing and giving. Does that sound familiar to anybody? Does that sound familiar? That is what we do at this house of the Lord, at this table of the Lord, every single time we gather in faith. We take and we bless and we give. And that was how the disciples that day recognized the presence of the living God in their midst once more. It's a powerful way for us to sense God's presence, Christ's presence with us in our midst, no matter what kind of night we just had, and to be empowered by it. Bless and give. Take and bless and give. Right after that, Jesus says to Peter and his disciples, and he says to you and to me today, from now on, if you really love me, then do what I just did. Go forth in your life and feed my lambs. Go forth in your life and tend my sheep. Tend the people around you. Be that, be that guy in this world. Keep your hope fresh. Do you love me? Then feed my sheep. Do you love me? Tend my lambs. The point of this story is clear. If we say we love God who loves us, then we, we can show it in our lives. In the, in the, Good times and the bad. So may we cast our net to the shore where the Lord guides us. May we continually be surprised by the catch and nourished by sharing in the blessing of the risen Lord. Amen. Amen. Now we're going to share another blessing as we ask our parents and godparents of Jen and Bell to come forward. Well, everyone open to page 301. <laughs>
Spanish book, the Shin in the Chan, the Jet, the Swap, and the Tay, the Rice, the Spray. She's saying hi. Will you, by the prayers and your witness, help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? Thank you. Top 10, you know, too. Will you, by the prayers and your witness, help this child? We go into the full stature of Christ and say, I will have help. Amen. Thank you. Do we have Satan and all the forces of wickedness that is regarding uh, God? Yeah. Are we not sent? Do we not see the evil powers of the world that corrupt and destroy the citizens of God? Amen. Thank you. We turn to Christ and accept him as your Savior. You put your whole trust in his grace and in his love. Amen. You promise to follow and obey him as your Lord. Amen. Will the people please stand? <laughs> we have vows to make as well. The Bible of page 303. Will the new witness these vows to all of his power to support this child in her life and in Christ? Yes. Yeah. The last joy for this child will be committed to Christ. And the new hour of that people's covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son of the Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day,
by the Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live by the power of his resurrection and live to his coming again in glory, who live and reign now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you let the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah of Christ to lead us to his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin to everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. And through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And now, Sanctify this one we pray by the power of your Holy Spirit that those who are here cleansed from sin and born anew may continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. <laughs>
together the great thanksgiving, page 361, in the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly we are bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true pastoral lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death and by his rising to life again has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and so in unity, constancy, and peace and at the last day, bring us with Annabelle and all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah! First, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, yeah. let us be the feast. Hallelujah!
gifts of God for you, people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ gives himself for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. We hearing from the first rows. All are invited to come forward.
prayer is on page 365. <clears throat> Let us pray together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. You have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we go forth into the world in peace. Be strong and of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good, rejoicing in the power of God's Spirit. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us now and remain with us always. Amen. Now, the recessional is a lively tune. I am the resurrection and I am the life. And after you hear the word resurrection, it's going to go, I am the resurrection, I am the life. Right? One clap, resurrection, four claps, life. You ready? Up. <laughs>
aprender 